Top on our news at this hour, a sense of crisis is deepening in number 10 Downing Street as British Prime Minister Boris Johnson faces a threat of a confidence vote of his handling of the Partygate scandal. The latest, Johnson's ethics advisor, Christopher Geit, has demanded an explanation from the Prime Minister, saying there were legitimate questions about whether he broke the ministerial code. Responding to Geit, Johnson denied breaching any code of conduct. In Britain, the ministerial code sets the standard of conduct expected from all ministers. Among the many rules, the code says that, many, that ministers who knowingly mislead parliament will be expected to offer their resignation. The big question is, did the prime minister lie in parliament? Boris Johnson maintains the answer is no. The prime minister insists there was no intent to break the law, that he had been fully accountable and had apologized for mistakes made. But others are not so convinced, especially in light of Johnson last week amending the rules of the ministerial code to make clear that ministers who breach the code in a minor way will not always be expected to resign. Under the new rules, they could apologize or temporarily lose their pay. Johnson became the first serving UK prime minister found guilty of breaking the law while in office when he was fined by police for attending a birthday party in June 2020. Johnson now faces an inquiry by the Privileges Committee on whether he knowingly misled Parliament over Partygate. If the committee concludes he did, a resignation will be expected. But pressure on the Prime Minister is already high, as the number of Conservative members of Parliament publicly calling for him to quit hit 30. There needs to be 54 letters submitted withdrawing their support to trigger a confidence vote. According to the Telegraph, however, Number 10 is preparing to fight back with a plan to stabilize Johnson's leadership with a renewed focus on the economy and the cost of living crisis. Reports suggest that Number 10 plans regular public briefings to explain to the public what is being done to tackle these issues and avoid a recession. But these plans might just come too late. Murmurings in the halls of Westminster suggest that the confidence vote might come as soon as next week. The parliament is currently in recess to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And for more on this, we on correspondent Sally Patterson is joining us live from London. Sally Patterson, good to see you and welcome to the program. Why is it so difficult for Boris Johnson, even after all these allegations and inquiries, to admit guilt and call it quits or even let the investigations take its cause? Well, Mr. Johnson is not about to take responsibility, it seems, for we've seen the latest blow to his credentials where his ethics advisor, Lord Geit, has said that there are legitimate questions about whether the Prime Minister broke the ministerial code. Now, the code outlines the rules that government ministers must follow when in when in a position in cabinet and these have an overarching duty to comply with the law. Now, Lord Guide said that the Prime Minister should have to put to the public if he thinks that he did not break the code and also the law. Now, the Prime Minister, of course, and his wife, Carrie Johnson, and the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, all received fines from the police for attending a surprise birthday party for the Prime Minister during lockdown restrictions under the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this was one of several events held in government buildings and the police issued over 100 fines in total to government officials. But in response to Law Guide's accusations, Mr. Johnson says he did not breach the code because there was no intent to break the law. In a letter to his advisor sent, he said he has taken full responsibility for everything that took place on his watch. And he also said that paying a fixed penalty notice is not a criminal conviction. Sally, considering the fight, back, uh, the fight back by number 10, when Parliament reconvenes, will the confidence vote really be the final nail for Johnson? Well, there is mounting pressure, of course, from members of Parliament for the Prime Minister to go. We've now seen at least 30 members of Parliament call for the Prime Minister to resign. Now, that's not yet at 54 letters which are needed in order to trigger an official contest of leadership in the Conservative Party. Now, the most recent, one of the most recent uh, 
members of parliament to speak out is former, former cabinet minister Andrew Leadsom, who has criticised the prime minister for what she called unacceptable failures of leadership. Now, we've also seen former Conservative leader Lord Haig suggest that there might be a leadership contest as soon as next week. However, the Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab has suggested this is not the case at all. He says, I'm not saying that nothing significant or serious took place, but the Prime Minister has dealt with all the issues. It's not clear who could replace the Prime Minister, though former Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt is seen as a front run runner, as is the current Defence Minister and also the Foreign Minister Liz Truss. So the Prime Minister might not be ready to walk out, but it might end up not being his own choice. Live from London, our correspondent Sally Patterson, thank you. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.